Hello everyone. Today we're looking at one of these. This is a Motorola 6800X. Uh, now you might recognize this from the other video or um, certainly one that looks just like it. Um, in fact, there's quite a few um, different models out there that look uh, very similar, uh, very similar indeed. Uh, this particular one or, or, or the, the 6800X um, is actually an analog model. Um, they did do phones like this, which actually look very, very similar to this, uh, which were actually GSM, uh, and the GSM versions you can still use today. So uh, don't be tempted to buy one of these and think that you can definitely use it. Um, there are ones that obviously you can't because uh, they work on eTax. This particular one, the 6800X, does work on eTax, which means um, it's a paperweight, basically. Um, uh, and this does look very, very similar to uh, a Motorola 1000, for example, which actually looks like this. Now, you can obviously see the similarities in the handset. Um, very, very similar. Um, in fact, apart from that logo, um, I would say they actually look very, very identical, apart from obviously the buttons down here, which have been switched around. Um, I'd say actually, um, that actually looks exactly the same. Um, very, very similar indeed. Um, in fact, the lines down here are slightly different, um, but to the untrained eye, you wouldn't be able to tell. Um, so both have got volume keys on the, on the side. Um, this one, unfortunately, is a little dirty. Um, but yeah, um, just to just to make you aware, obviously, um, so a lot of people are buying these nowadays, thinking, "Yeah, I'm going to buy myself one of them and carry it around and be Mr. Coolos." Uh, and in fact, <laughs> when they get the, the handset, uh, you can actually use it. So um, just be warned. If you do find one that you're not you're, you're not sure, obviously, if you can or can't use it, uh, post me a comment, and um, I'll um, I'll double check my collection and. Uh, and, uh, and let you know if, if it's worth getting anyway. Um, th these particular ones um, um, all use the, the standard 2000 milliampere hour battery, which is one of these. Uh, you can still pick these up. This is a, a 2014 battery I bought a couple of months ago. Um, and this still does hold charge. It holds charge very well, actually. Um, you get about um, about two, two and a half days um, on one of these uh, on a full charge of that. So they're, they're not actually that bad. Um, uh, obviously, when I say two and a half days, I don't mean the analog one. I do mean the GSM one because the analog one will forever be searching for a service. And of course, there ain't service because they shut off analog cell towers. So the battery gets drained quite quickly. Um, so uh, before I, I slip in uh, the, the battery, I'm just going to quickly show you um, uh, what this is made of. Obviously, the handset. Um, this one's a bit grubby. Unfortunately, I ain't cleaned this one yet. Um, standard connector on that. And uh, obviously... Um, this is the phone, so um, you can undo that by uh, lifting this little notch up here. That ejects the phone, the phone part anyway. Uh, and this is the phone. They did do um, double thickness ones um, as well, um, so look out for those. Uh, they're the older ones, obviously. Um, the newer ones are all sort of this sort of size, which is about an inch in, in thickness. Um, you got the, the model and make there. That slots right in here. Um, and you need to get these latches into that uh, into that rail there, and that takes some power to to slot that back in. Actually, that's quite a tough little job. So, um, what's important to note is these um, when they when they when uh, when they were um, available, uh, you can actually use these um, as a hands-free device um, because. The unit as it is actually is a hands-free device as well. The microphone is here, and if you can just about see, the speaker is just there. So a real nifty little tool, actually. Uh, and this is long before they uh, they banned people from using cell phones um, while driving. So you could actually use this. Uh, it was a self-contained unit. So uh, let me quickly fire this one up and show you the menu real quick. Um, it's very similar to um, the... Um, 
the uh, BT Emerald, which actually the BT Emerald, which um, I did a video about recently as well, um, is actually based on this phone. The handset is just different. They just chose to, to they, just, they just chose BT just chose um, Motorola to to to, to put white um, white buttons on it. Um, the, the menu is is virtually almost identical in this. So um, let's quickly go through. The red light obviously means there's no service. Um, uh, if it was to flash, obviously uh, on and off, then um, the phone didn't have service, but it would still be able to pick up other networks. So from a, if you were signed up to, you know, British Telecom and then there was another provider um, and uh, there was no British Telecom service where you were, but the other provider had service, you would get that uh, to flash, basically. Um, the, uh, the pyramid is obviously when you're when you're not in your home network or roaming. And uh, that handset is obviously when you're dialing. So let's just do 999. And nothing's going to happen because there's no cell towers um, and obviously that lights up you get the usual um, sound that you can't place the call basically um, going through the menu uh, real quick you just hit the menu button um, and you get the menu in here uh, which is very similar to uh, the other phone in fact actually the menu to this is actually very similar to um, the um, the Microtac 9800X, um, which I have a few of actually, I, and I do need to do a video about this. I did say I was going to do a video quite some time ago. Um, I've got about a dozen of them actually, all different ones. So uh, the menu on that phone is very similar to this actually. Um, so if you had one of these obviously and you later upgraded to a Microtac, um, the menu was very, very similar. So going through here, uh, you got uh, a grand total of seven different uh, menu trees. You got general, call, tones, timers, secure, which is obviously security settings, uh, service, which is your service settings, and transp. Now, I'm guessing that's transportable. I haven't quite worked it out because um, I haven't got a manual for this particular one. But if you go in, you go in by pressing the M+. Plus, um, you get um, display battery meter. Uh, Vox, which I'm not too sure what that's for, um, and then high power. Um, these could operate up to eight watts, so I think the the normal was two watts, um, and obviously you could uh, increase that to eight watts. So if you put it on high power, it obviously uh, would operate on eight watts if you're in a in a poor service area. Um, so in fact, this will tell you um, if you're on high power when you first power it up. I think it, it does come up and say high power, non-standard high power, there you go. So um, if you want to disable that, you quickly go into the menu um, and you go M plus, for example. Um, in fact, where was the high power option? I'm not even sure, I remember where it was. Nope. Um, Should really remember where it was. Was it option seven? Display battery box high power. There we go. So uh, to um, uh, disable that, it's either uh, C or menu plus, whichever. Do you... oh, actually on this one, it's it's C. Menu plus doesn't work. Interesting to know actually uh, on the BD Emerald uh, and on the seventy four hundred X. I think both work. On this one, it's just C. Um, this is obviously an older model, um, worth noting anyway if you're changing options. Not that it matters because you can't use this phone to place calls anyway. Um, so review status, uh, we're back to option one basically, theft alarm. Um, just to exit is um, the call in button. They did a dedicated um, sound button on here, the sound catcher. I'm not too sure what that's for. I'm guessing maybe if the phone did ring, you could press that and silence the ringer. Like I said, I'm not too sure. I'll have to try it with the uh, with the GSM with the GSM models um, just to just to find out what you know what this dedicated button was for. Um, like I said, this has got two um, two side volume buttons. If you just press them, you obviously increase the um, the volume of the earpiece. Um, and if you press the the shift or the up arrow, then you could uh, change the the volume of the ringtone, like so. Um, and that's pretty much it. These phones were quite basic. These were state-of-the-art at the time, um, but in, in today's terms, they really are very basic. Um, 
you know, uh, I'm not sure this does have a phone book. Um, it does have the memory recall and memory uh, plus buttons. Um, and it does have obviously the, um, the, uh, the alphabet on there. Um, I, I haven't really tried putting a, a number in as such. Uh, it could very well be that it does have a phone book. I don't know. Um, I will have to confirm that and uh, post a comment at a later stage. So um, check out the other videos that I have. Um, like I said, th there is a, a whole myriad of these. Um, I got probably about 15 of these all in this sort of shape. Mostly Motorola's. They did a, a couple of Bosch ones as well, which are just Motorola rebrands. Um, and I'll try and get through um, and do a video about each one because uh, there are there, there are subtle differences. And if you don't know one model from the other, um, and you want to buy a GSM 900 version, which you can still use to this day, um, th there are certain things you need to watch out for. Even the GSM 900 versions, not all of them will work with today's SIM cards, believe it or not. Um, so, but I'll talk more about that when I do a video about a, a Motorola 1000 or a Motorola 2000 or a, a 2200 or a 2500 or a 2700 or a 2900. Um, all of those are GSM 900 uh, versions. So. Um, so like I said, check out uh, the other videos, uh, give me the thumbs up if you like this, uh, this phone or the video, and um, please um, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.